Since IT projects were first rolled out, organizations have been struggling with the concept of how to train users, how to enable users to leverage all the features and functionality that they'd invested in and receive the productivity ROI that they've been looking for. That challenge is either, is either further heightened in cloud technologies, especially around Office 365. By being an Office 365 subscriber, you not only get the features and functionality and applications that you purchased at the time you signed your agreement and rolled out the service, but you're also going to get all the future features, functionality, and applications that Microsoft rolls into your Office 365 tenant. That's an unbelievable opportunity for new productivity and transformation. It also increases this training challenge. How do I make these features and functionality available? How do I make sure my users can capitalize on it? It introduces a concept and a new concept called continuous learning. I need to make sure that my users can capture the features, functionality, and services today that I want them to adopt today, but I also need them to be able to adapt to those new ones that are rolling down in the future. Our next presentation by Jen Mason is going to be focusing in on how continuous learning is changing the environment, changing end user adoption, and really driving those numbers up. Joining me today on the panel is going to be George Diaz. George is a modern workplace S uh, SSP inside the Microsoft Federal Division focused on civilian customers. Brendan Farrell, Brendan's with Planet Technologies. Brendan has a unique perspective having worked uh, in a large federal agency that, that is a, has adopted these technologies and is looking to capture all the ROI they're looking from them. And then Dave Riley. Dave was one, on a panel earlier today and Dave is the Planet Technologies Northeast Client Director but has an extensive background both in state and local government and at Microsoft and he's got some really interesting customer stories on that adoption. So with that, Jen, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Great. Thanks. As Steve mentioned, there's so much when it comes to Office 365. We often hear that Office 365 is an evergreen technology. It means we're constantly getting new features. We're adding new things. Teams. Teams is something that's coming new to the GovCloud um, later this year. You have groups. You have SharePoint Online. You have SharePoint Communication Site. Everything is evergreen and constantly changing. But that means our classic ways of traditional training are probably not going to be best suited in this new evergreen environment. And so we look at classical training, we think of things like classroom training or instructor-led training, point in time training. I'm going to go to training. I'm going to learn how to use maybe SharePoint, SharePoint Online, something like that. And then I'm going to go back to my office. And until next year, when I have a new training budget, I'm not going to go get more training. It's going to be point in time. It's uh, kind of an old way of doing things. Now, there's always arguments for when classroom training is good and when point in time training is good. But what I'd like to introduce is this new concept of continuous learning. That's when we're going to attack things through micro learning and just in time training on demand. So I can get training not necessarily you know, once every six months, but I'm going to go get training right when I need it. I'm trying to do something in Excel. I don't know how to do it. I can go, I can look up that training, I can get not a whole course or something that's going to take me weeks to complete, but something that I can do quickly. And I'm going to get access to that immediately just in time when I need it. I'm also going to be surrounded by education campaigns. That's the idea of there always being training available. It just becomes something just as I start using these tools for digital transformation, I start using it also as a way to learn. I'm constantly learning and that's part of my transformation. I'm learning new tools, doing new things, and as the evergreen technology is there, then my ability to consume it and work with it is evergreen as well. And so what we wanted to talk about today are just three, um, three continuous learning strategies. So these are three things we have seen successfully implemented across many customers that have really taken them from a classic learning approach to a continuous learning approach. Now there's probably many more strategies and everything we share with you guys today, you really need to tweak it and make it match your organization. A lot of times our overall training solution will be a mix of those classic training things we've talked about as well as some of these new modern techniques. All right, the first one we're going to look at is training on demand. I don't think I can say this uh, enough, is that people want to get access to the training right when they need it. Um, if they're working at home at 10 o'clock at night on a proposal or a presentation, something that's due, we all work late, we all have that moment. I don't want to wait till the next morning when the help desk is open to call and get help with something. I want to get the training. I expect it to be there, be quick, and I want to get it right away. I want to know about new features. If something new is coming out and you guys are going to tell me, hey, you guys have been communicating all of this time, but now I can make your life better because I'm going to give you this thing called Teams. 
well, before I even want to talk to you about what the heck Teams is, I want to know how it's going to impact me. How am I going to use it in my day to day? And is it going to be hard? I don't want my life to be more complicated as an end user. I just want to use my tools, get what I need to know, and then go back and do it. But I want you as an end user, I want you as someone who's providing the training for me, I want you to realize that as my job changes, so are the tools I'm going to use. They're going to change. And as that changes, I'm going to need more education and I'm going to need more training. But if you give me too much all at once, I'm not going to be able to consume it. So one of the strategies we've seen that's been really successful is by giving people just the amount of training that they need just when they need it. So it's going to be on demand. It's going to be quick. It's going to be simple. It's going to be just what I need right when I need it. Okay. And the next thing that we've really seen a lot of success around is campaigns and learning paths. So as I'm starting out as a user, I may be just introduced to working on Excel with formulas. Give me a year or two, I'm probably going to have an amazing set of skills. But then, you know, maybe I want to take it to that next level. And so I want the training to be able to grow with me. I want to know if I'm starting here on day one, where am I going to be on day 30? Where am I going to be on day 60? What about new things that are coming out? How do I go from actually just using the tool to transforming the way that we can work when we use the tool? So by setting up the training this way and giving people uh, very complete learning paths of where they need to go for training, we can create a really rich experience with them. As the tools and technologies grow, so can the users that are using them. We also want to keep things top of mind. Out of sight usually means out of mind. I can set up a great training solution. It's on demand and it's ready to go. Quite honestly, if I don't continually remind people that it's there, never going to go back to the training. So we want to do things like set up campaigns. So if I'm just launching Windows 10, I might want to first set up a campaign. Welcome to Windows 10. Here are the new features. A month later, I might want to send out an email campaign that says, hey, you're still using Windows 10. I bet you didn't know these five features were there. And I'm going to push that information out to them regularly. And again, because my training was quick, on demand, and micro learning style, they're able to just quickly get what they need and in just a couple of minutes enhance um, their education and what they know about the products. All right. And then finally, the third strategy that I wanted to talk about before you go back to the panel is what we can do is become a trusted advisor for our users. We want to provide so much training and training that is so good for users that they naturally start to come to us. They expect that they can come to this training to get whatever they need um, to do their job. And a lot of times that's a little bit of a culture change. We have to get them coming back to us knowing that I don't have to go out um, to Google or Bing and find the information. It's going to be provided for me right at my fingertips. I just need to go here and kind of look for it. So we want to become that go-to resource for people. We want them to come to us when they're stuck. Come to us when they have to say, what tool should I use when? Or, you know, I'm trying to do this and I don't feel very efficient. How can I gain efficiencies? We want to win them over with the trust. So with the training that we provide, we want to win them over, educate them, and prepare them to be super successful in their job. And then another way that we can do this, becoming their trusted advisor, is just to provide continual uh, go-to engagements for them. So one thing that we've seen super successful is an idea of a tips and tricks session. So once a week, we put it together. We invite everybody out and we say, hey, we're going to show you 30 minutes how to work in OneNote today. Probably tips and tricks you've never seen. Had an experience with this just this morning. I was sitting in the workroom and I was talking to Jerry Martin and I showed him how to do something so simple in Outlook that he just looked at me and his mouth fell open like, I didn't know you could do that. And I've been using Outlook for 10 years, probably a lot longer. But you can go into it and you can see, and it was just something so quick and simple. He never would have thought to go look for that for training, but it's something that could impact him and make him more efficient. So we want to become these resources for people, but we want to create channels and create an environment where we're pushing information to them so much that they know that when they need to come pull information, where else would they go but to the people that they trust for those types of resources. So those are some of the best uh, strategies that we've seen. We're now going to cut over to the panel and get some insight from the rest of the team on some of the different things that they've used for continuous learning in different environments. Jen, thank you for the great presentation again. You're killing it up there. Killing thank it. you. So, Jen, I don't want to embarrass you, no, and I know okay. we're not doing a commercial today, but I do want to <laughs> kind of set aside, you know, set aside uh, you know, your your focus on this, right? So, you are 
uh, in addition to lots of other roles at Planet Technology, you also run our Evolve 365 business, which is focused on this yep. problem, right? So you bring a ton of expertise that you know, customers in federal and in state and local government are trying to adopt these technologies, right? Yep. So I guess one of the questions I, I want to start with you is, you know, in that dialogue with those customers, what are they telling you? Like, if they could do one thing differently than they had when they rolled it out, what would it be? One thing differently. I don't think it's ever just one thing. Um, but they want to be able to change the culture for users um, so that users know we're getting all of this new technology. Everyone's overwhelmed, but they want to at the same time that they're overwhelmed, they kind of want to change that to being empowered. So they really want to roll out the training at the same rate that they're rolling out um, the products. And so it kind of takes away some of that fear and some of that stress. So the, the groups that have been the most successful um, have done things like, I work in the legal department, so I'm doing those campaigns and stuff like that I was talking about. I'm doing those just for my legal department. And I'm giving them exactly what they need so that they are embracing the new technology empowered instead of annoyed or in fear of having to learn something new. So I think the more that they can empower people with knowledge, I think that's what they all want to get ahead of. And so that's what we've seen most successful. So is that in come across in sort of custom skill tracks kind of thought process? Yeah, like looking at the users, taking time to understand what that user is, and then putting together something uh, for them. So a campaign that's dedicated um, to them. If you look at like two different environments, you've got uh, maybe a legal department and a, a finance department. Two totally different teams going to work totally different. If I start to give the finance team a bunch of information about you know storing documents inside of SharePoint and using metadata, or I start to give the legal team a bunch of information about Excel formulas, they're not going to be very happy. They're not going to really come to us and trust us. That may be good things that they need to know in the long run, but really if I can push to them, you know, if there's a million things I can do inside of Office, if I can push to them, you know, the hundred that make the most sense for them, the more they're going to embrace it. And then we'll actually start to see some of the, you know, the buzzword digital transformation. We'll actually start to see it when we get into the day-to-day -day of what we're changing for our users. And so, George, like, we're, we're super lucky to have George on the panel. George has a really unique perspective because George has worked at a consulting organization. He's worked in state and local government. And now, as I mentioned in the intros, you're in the federal team mm -hmm. from civilian agencies. So to that end, you know, I'm sure you're seeing your customers across that spectrum struggle with kind of standard training. Absolutely. You know, what, what are some of the experiences? What are some of the successful models you're seeing through that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's really an interesting shift, and it really goes across everything, right? So even when I was working in state and local uh, as a deployment specialist or, you know, within Microsoft, uh, the, the, the changes have been so drastic um, that for everything coming in. And, and really, you know, there was this, this view, you know, that, that you talk to the users, and it would be that, especially on the federal side, it, it's even worse because there's so many security concerns, and justified. But it becomes a challenge with a digital world and a, and a cloud world of how to uh, provide the features to the user. So it was there was a, a big disconnect. You know, the IT was always talking about how do we get these deployed. It was always a secondary thought to okay, how are we going to empower these users? Because generally speaking, it was the minimal amount of tools that they can give them to do their job. Mm -hmm. And then what they found was, and I've seen this a lot all across the board, is a lot of the shadow IT, where you know the IT provides a subset of tools. Uh, and the users go out and they just do their own thing, which obviously presents a huge risk to, to the agencies out there. Um, and so what we're seeing is IT really shifting the focus back to saying, okay, now we understand cloud. It's been here. It's mature. Um, you know, it's secure. It can do everything we want it to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, now how are we going to provide these tools and how are we going to train the users? And, and you see a, a pretty big shift of um, you know, generations within a lot of these agencies. right? So you have a younger workforce mm -hmm. coming in that generally is more familiar with the tools because they kind of grew up with them uh, versus kind of my generation where, you know, I'm an Outlook heavy person, you know, using new tools like Teams, it, it's new to me, um, you know, and so it, it, it's really become this kind of meeting together in the middle and it really was a challenge for a lot of agencies is how do we do these things? And they would always come back to Microsoft and say, okay, what's the best way for us to, uh, to educate our users to make sure they're, you know, ready for these tools, but not only that, they're ready for the tool tomorrow. And the, to your point, right, the, mm -hmm. the, what's the next tool tomorrow? After Teams, what comes in next? And what's next? And what's next? How do we do that? Um, and we found a lot of success where, 
um, we've brought in tools like the Evolve tool and said, okay, now you have this, you know, and really built a, a framework, a project framework to say, you know, here's how we're going to educate our users and here's how we're going to do it. And then putting this kind of a model in, um, it's seen a lot of success. Um, probably the biggest success story I saw was a, uh, an agency um, when I was still in state and local government. And their biggest thing was they started with the end user um, education, right? Not necessarily the training piece of it, but just the awareness. Hey, we're going to Office 365. You'd walk into their building and there'd be these huge placards with uh, the QR codes and they could click that and it would take them to the SharePoint portal and that SharePoint portal would have, like to your point, the, you know, hey, here's what's coming, here's the tools, here's the great, here's how it collaborates. It was just those kind of videos of, you know, not necessarily, okay, here's how you do an Excel spreadsheet and here's how you do a table. It was just, you know, here's an example of people collaborating and how they're collaborating in this new world. So it kind of got them familiar with, okay, we're going to this different model. And then it kind of shifted into more of a, okay, now how do I start using those tools? To your point yeah. of those kind of different, la different learning tracks, right? Yeah. You know, it's, hey, I just need to learn kind of, you know, status quo. What I do now, how am I going to do that in a, in a cloud world? Okay, cool. Now that I have that, wow, I've got 20 new bells, 13 new whistles. How do I use those? And then it becomes, okay, now I really want to get empowered. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of that, especially in agencies that are, you know, a lot of these agencies that I work with are um, all over the U.S. You know, so that then it becomes, hey, how do I do this in a way? I can't just have a training center down in down in D.C., right? You know, how are people out in the West Coast going to do that? How are people in, you know, remote user, right? Remote user, how are they going to do that? So being able to, to provide that digital content on demand for your users, that's one central place they go and how to educate them on it um, has really become powerful. And we're starting to see a lot more uptick there as customers become more mature in their cloud environments, um, really leveraging tools like the Evolve tool. To, to really um, you know, harness the power of the technology. I, I just think it's fascinating. You know, I, we, we spend a lot of time talking to our customers that you know, the, the move to Office 365 is not about an right. IT project, right? We're, we're not talking about an IT project. We're talking about how it affects our end users. And if we're doing nothing else than you know, operational efficiencies associated with moving data from one spot to another, we're really sort of missing right. the boat. But the challenge, of course, is the traditional training methods, which I'm not sure actually ever worked that great to begin with, <laughs> certainly don't scale to the next level. So, so Dave, I'm curious, in, in your customer base right now, and also in your experience in government, you know, how are you seeing people effectively tackle this challenge? Well, I mean, I, I think that the opportunity that an Office 365 migration allows is allows for uh, a company like Planet to come in and, and provide a different perspective on a number of different fronts, not just compliance and security and how you administer an environment, but also how you really look at and cater to the end users. Because, Steve, you're absolutely right. You know, a successful Office 365 project is not one that simply moves mail from the on-premise environment to the cloud. It's from it's it's getting end users to embrace the new services that they're not even aware of as part of that migration will be available. So, uh, in in the context of the, a large customer we're working with in the Northeast, I think they recognize that immediately in the project and recognize the opportunity that that migration offered to also change the approach to how they communicate with end users, how they set expectations of what's coming, because beyond the training, there's the end user communication piece, which is how do I ensure that they're not anxious about this change? Because the surest way to kill end user adoption is for everybody to be worried and nervous that this is going to change their world for the worse, when in fact, it has a lot of opportunities yeah. to improve the way they do work, simplify the way they communicate with one another. and so. We worked with them to make sure that that was incorporated as part of the overall plan and made sure that through the pilot, they recognized that the success of the pilot wasn't just a successful migration. It was the, hey, the end users are starting to behave differently. They're starting to learn in ways that are more modern and, and anticipated, right? Our, our modern workforce today is more used to change happening with cell phones updating on the fly, with apps having new changes coming. It's, it's, it's somewhat an issue that IT and training are a little bit behind the curve and we're, bring, we're helping with this platform to bring them up to the 21st century. Yeah, I mean, I think in so many ways we talk to customers and they oh, ch training, checkbox, right? It's one of the mm -hmm. things, I even had a customer say that to me the other day on the phone, like, I want to move forward with an Office 365 migration, but training to me is one of those checkboxes I need to manage to, but I'm not quite re yet ready to discuss it. And I was having a dialogue with them, well, if you're not really ready to discuss training, we're not really ready to discuss 
any type of change right. that you might yeah. want to affect. So if your exchange environment's going down today, you might have really compelling reasons to move to the cloud today that have nothing to do with end user ROI, but that's a very you know, specific scenario um, and not having yeah. to do with all the investment you've made in the access to the feature functionality. So, so Brendan, you've been uh, embedded with a customer now for quite some time, and I, I like to consider you a cultural change agent there because um, of what the great work that you've been able to do there. So talk to us a little bit about this customer's journey. They're a fairly sizable federal agency and their customer journey as it relates specifically to end user adoption and continuous learning. Yes, definitely. Uh, there's really two agencies I work with on O365 migrations, and we found out that they were really two types of people, those who can make time for learning and those who don't know they can make time for learning yet. Uh, when we set up training beforehand and tried to put everything in place for these users, uh, it was a low attendance type thing and then a lot of high tick accounts after the migration because mm -hmm. the things they should have known weren't there. When we took the time to plan it out in the second migration, um, we, we saw a really decreased drop in tick account and a high utilization after the fact. So when the person's dealing with something and don't know, as long as they had a centralized place that was easy to use and was trackable, we were able to see that there was learning that was happening. So letting people know that, hey, I know you're busy, I know you're really good and efficient at your job, but there's this training out there that's gonna mm -hmm. help you get more efficient and save more time, then they'll start using it because you've convinced them there's a reason I need to stop what I'm doing during my day and, and get involved in this training piece. And there's, you know, when you're giving them short pieces of information that's really relevant, and to what they're doing, and it's not four-hour, five-hour breakout sessions, they're going to go for it. And they don't even realize it's training. Right. That's the best type of training. When I can send them an email, give them a couple of points, talk through something, and wow, they've clicked and watched a video. Now they've done about 10 minutes of training, but they never would have said, I just went and did 10 minutes of training. But in reality, that's what right. we gave them. And what was great on the back end was we could see where people were going for training and start developing some customized marketing behind them, yeah. essentially saying, hey, we noticed you're interested in this. Here's some more things to look into. Yeah, it's funny. We had a we had a customer that we were working with, and and you know they were an Evolve customer, and they went in and they were early on in their Office 365 migration, but the very next migration they were going to do was Windows 10, mm. and because of the tracking and what you're saying, we were actually able to go in and see that three months before the migration, there was this big uptick in people looking at Windows 10 mm. content. We were like, wait a second, what's going on? And then when we were able to dig into it and realize, we realized, like, like you were saying, Dave, they were apprehensive about what was coming and they were a little bit nervous. So then we were able to take that information, pull together, and then push to the larger audience. And so just by being able to track it, when you're tracking it and you're mindfully look, looking for it, sometimes you actually get data that you weren't even really mining for. Like we were tracking it and seeing what was happening with Office 365, but then saw this other trend which allowed us to be responsive to what was going on in the environment. And, kind and of took over for you. No, Sorry please. About that. And it's really an empowering platform, right? Because right. The, as, part, as long as you're communicating effectively yeah. that this is available, we had a scenario where one of the first early adopter migra agencies migrated. Um, I was on site for one of the migration waves and uh, sitting in the war room and I had a gentleman come who was clearly part of the legal team in the organization. Uh, and he was really just a frown. He's like really reluctant. Um, he said that he actually skipped the last office upgrade. He asked them not to because he was so comfortable <laughs> with an office version beyond uh, bef before Office 2010. And I just simply walked over to his own area, his office, and I and I asked to just look at his browser. And I quickly typed in the platform URL and got him to his own specific customized training site. Mm -hmm. And I said, there are so many different ways to look at this data. And, and oh, by the way, nobody's looking over your shoulder. Nobody's telling you do this. You just decide what you need when you need it. Yeah. And you're off to the races. And he felt empowered because one of the changes, one of the challenges of change is that some people don't want people to know how long it might take them to change, but the Evolve platform allows them to go at their own pace, yeah. not necessarily have anybody looking over your shoulder or in a training classroom where you're concerned about each person next to you. You go at your own pace, it potentially could accelerate your learning because you're doing it when you can and picking up the snippets yeah, that you definitely. need. So, oh, go ahead, sorry, just real quick. So, so and to your point about the, the data analytics, I mean, it's, it is really amazing. So I went, um, down to a customer last uh, last summer and uh, met with one of uh, kind of the southeast region of that customer and I've been working with their central IT up here in DC for nine months uh, and went down to, to to meet with the kind of CIOs and leaders of that area 
and the amount that they knew about what they were doing with groups and team, not not teams yet, but groups and SharePoint and things like that, and the amount of work they were doing, I said, how did you learn all this stuff? They said, oh, we just kind of figured that out on our own. So well, aren't you working with central IT? Oh, no, 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 you know, they've got kind of their core package, right? But they were just kind of doing it on their own. And some of the things they do, I mean, it was amazing what I saw. So well, how are you communicating that back? They said, well, we're not really. And then we went through some of the other pieces of the suite that they hadn't been leveraging. And they were like, we, we own this, we own this, we own this. And it's interesting, you know, when you talk about the data analytics, right? If we had a way for those customers to go in and say, hey, what, you know, what are the things they're using? What are they looking at? What are they training on? What are the kind of, you know, things they're doing? Then it allows agencies to much better communicate holistically and even share that information, right? The Southeast Definitely. region is doing this. Hey, up in the Northeast, maybe you guys want to, you know, form a, a working group and work together. Definitely. That kind of ama yeah. information is and so it's amazing. so amazing what's coming out with the Office 365, the content pack that they have. It's going to be called the Protip productivity suite or something mm -hmm. like that when it actually comes uh, full release out in I think around the January time frame they're talking about it last week at Ignite where that's going to go in and track who's doing what who's doing what inside of teams who's doing what here and there's one organization um, that we've been looking at and we were looking at their office 365 usage and we're like wow you guys are doing great usage of storing data oh, but you're not sharing and then we went and looked at what they were doing with OneDrive and it's like you guys are storing a lot of stuff here but you're not sharing. And if we're storing all this stuff in SharePoint, we're storing it all in OneDrive, but we're not seeing any sharing, well then we all know what we're doing. We're downloading it and sending it as attachments to emails. And so by looking at that, we're able to say, okay, well what's the next campaign that we need to do? We need to send out a sharing campaign because I'm sure we're not sharing because we don't know a new and easy way to do it that's any different than email with what we've been doing. So now, based on that data, now I can put together a learning path that's very easy for people to adopt to. So that raises a really important question here. Like, we want to work really, really closely to customers' training teams when they, when they have them, right? Because they're a critical component to the success because we all agree training and continuous training and learning is a critical component of it. I think one of the challenges that we have is there's this opportunity really for almost, you called it a trusted advisor, trusted advisor, a training consultant, somebody to help these customers understand mm -hmm. what their current customers are using, maybe judging what they're challenged with by looking at those data analytics, maybe creating campaigns and targets associated with that. I mean, are you guys seeing success in your customer bases with that kind of? Absolutely, and I think one of the things that tends to be overlooked, especially in state local government, is that there are two areas of any project that tend to be underfunded. It's the tech support team and the training team. And this is a platform that helps extend and supplement those resources. So they look at it as a, f a kind of a, a, a wonderful opportunity to make their role more impactful because mm -hmm. they're given tools that enable them to have a broader reach, to be able to have more effective communication strategies. Um, I say to my team and to customers all the time, the single biggest collaboration tool thus far up until Office 365 in government has been email. And people need to look at that and understand it and then address why that's not necessarily the most effective collaboration tool. And then as they look at it from that perspective and that paradigm and then match it against all the capabilities in Office 365, then it's, uh, the light bulb goes off, but then the anxiety builds is like, well, how can we tell everybody about all these different services? How are we going to get them to know which one to use? And you've got this platform that allows and for I've that. And I've seen the most success in organizations where we talk about the two underfunded groups. If one of them tries to do it alone, mm -hmm. it becomes very difficult. Right. But when they both get to that same point and then they can start working together, it's usually a low cost, low effort way. I mean, the communications group and the training group, they're already looking to send things out. So how can they team up with IT that, that can get them access to those reports? And so when those two groups can come together and start to work together, the results are, are pretty immediate, I think. And then that, that 21st century mindset also takes into play this, the concept that you had about micro-learning and specific uh, training channels, but also the ability to extend your, extend your technical support desk to answer questions that they don't currently answer today that are probably plaguing organizations. They don't realize that there are people struggling with Office, struggling with Excel Word, but those answers are now available as part of the platform. And that's actually one of the things I wanted to jump in with George and Brendan. One of the things I want to see is, are you guys seeing your customers where their help desks are really application experts on this? Are you seeing more the sort of the power user on the floor is addressing this? and? 
you know, and how do we, do, are you seeing that you're including the help desk in this, the power users, is it an addition to? I'm just curious as how you're seeing your customers adopt this. Yeah, so, so you know, it, it, it ranges a lot, you know, even just within the small space I cover. Um, you know, where I've seen a lot of the success is um, a lot of times what, uh, when I was in St. Local, a lot of the successful stories were finding, you know, let's say within, within, a, within an agency, finding power users and people that are really excited, bringing them in as early adopters yeah. and getting them up to speed. Um, because th to, the, to the help desk question is that, yeah, no, the help desk, generally speaking, is more break fix. Right. I can't get into this application. Okay, let's go in and, you know, do command line and figure out and reset it and reboot. It's more of that type of help. It is not a, I'm in Excel, I need to know how to use this, you know, power map to figure out how to map this data to a globe. They, they'll say, hey, you know, go Bing that, you know, and, and that really is where that, that or disconnect Or they'll say, is. we trained you on Excel eight months ago or two <laughs> right. months ago. <laughs> right, yeah. Well, that, that, that button wasn't there when we trained you right. six months well, ago. Well, that's right. the yeah. point, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. exactly. So there, there, there certainly is still a gap there. And I think, you know, while you may find here and there a help desk person that just happens to be, you know, they, they happen to love Outlook or Teams or groups yeah. or whatever that might have a little bit of expert, you know, either they're the one getting those personal calls every five minutes um, or the people are just getting either frustrated and not yeah. using it anymore or going to find on their own, right? And just going out there and just doing a web search and trying yeah. to find something. So it's, um, it, it ends up slowing that adoption curve. Um, and we've really been trying to work with a lot of federal customers to fill that gap. Right. Um, and I think this does such a great job of that because then you've got your traditional help desk, you've got that augmented support to dive deep into specific features, you know, the, 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 you know that, that content, the training, those yeah. little video snippets. Because that's the other one is that the users don't want to sit and watch a 45 minute video. They don't have time to, you know, they're, they're mission critical, uh, you know, uh, people that are out there doing things every single day, right? They don't, I can't spend half a day training. So to be able to go in and say, hey, I want to do this thing in Outlook. Hold on one second. Outlook. Okay, here, boop, 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 boop. They look it up. Oh, wow, there's a two minute video. Wow, I know what I'm doing now. You know, and then they can pin it and they can come back to it. They can look at it again. They wow. can share yeah. it with other people, those kind of things. That, and then that becomes very viral. You know, where all of a sudden it's like, you know, hey, Jen knows this really cool thing in Outlook. Where'd you find that out? Oh, check it out. And, and I want to tag on to that because I think that's really important because sometimes we talk, you know, Microsoft does a great job of providing quite a bit of content, right? Mm -hmm. And Microsoft, you guys do a great job with that. But one of the sure. problems is, is it's not centralized in any way, Correct. right? Yeah. So if, you know, if one person reviews that, unless they somehow forward it around to a bunch of people, it's not any, it's not helpful to anybody else. And there's no analytics associated with that, right? There's no organizational yeah. improvement mm -hmm. there. There might be mm -hmm. an individual improvement Correct. right so Brendan at, at your customer you know how are they how are you seeing the integration of the power user the training department and these types of continuous learning platforms what we did was we started strategizing with our internal teams to figure out all right how much can we change our users efficiencies right because we're not creatures of habits we're creatures of efficiency when we're at work um, so we knew that they would continue to call the same service desk person they usually do or follow that same process so we started training them first same material same stuff, just gave it to the technical people first so that when they got a call, they'd be able to answer it and then point the user to, hey, here's the place to go to. We also then incorporated into the internal uh, website so that their homepage would have that training piece there and they could just follow that link and go to it. So when you're starting to build up your support staff so that they're on the same tier as the technology, then that whole SLA process becomes a lot more efficient and your call closing becomes more efficient. And then the individual also is uh, a much happier person because then they're also learning and becoming more educated and, and being more involved with the overall mission of whatever agency. So in the time that we have, I'd love to hear everybody kind of give us a, um, a relatively short thought process on, we've got a customer, here's a customer scenario, they've deployed email, maybe sort of one other workload. They're struggling with the concept of how they're going to get value and get people up to speed and get end user adoption. Where do you think, Jen, I'll start with you, how do you think they should get started? Well, I think they should look at uh, where their users are at and find out, are, am I at least coming to the tool? Um, are the, am I using the tool? Am I at least going to it? If it's email, they're obviously going because it's email. Everyone goes there. Um, but then figuring out, okay, if I'm going in email, what's the behavior that I want to drive them to? and then starting to build a campaign around it. I like to look at the culture to figure out. Some cultures are, I can give them 10 different subjects over 10 different weeks, and they're gonna be learning all sorts of other things. There's other cultures where I'm gonna spend 10 weeks doing just a single Outlook campaign, trying to teach them how to do things. I might send one and say, hey, did you know you can create a custom signature? 
here's a couple of videos about it. The next week, hey, did you know you could use these styles? You can do these different things. Another week might be, hey, did you know you could send an attachment? Um, so I like to look at the culture and the rate at which they take the training and then work on putting together a campaign. Um, so I, I mean, I'm obviously going to suggest you look at a tool like Evolve or something like that to pull it all together. But even if you don't have access to that, pull together, even if the training is separate, pull it together in some single format that you can send out and then start tracking. How many people opened that email? And then start to see if you can get some gains. But then always be adjusting because as new technologies come out, uh, new tools come out, and as the culture of the organization changes, you might need to change. So like where a 10-step 10, a 10 email might be what I need the first time, maybe the next thing we look at might only need to be six. And then it might come down to where I can do it rapid fire. So just kind of evaluating those things and then, and then starting and building from there. So our end user's continuous learning requires us to take a continued, continuous evaluation, yeah. right? Because if we don't, they'll outpace us and then we'll no longer be providing them a service. So as they start to learn differently and as they start to go from a classic or traditional training to a more of a continuous learning environment, we have to then continually improve ourselves so that we're one step ahead of them. Yeah, great. George, thoughts? Yeah, no, th those are all really great points. And, you know, I, I would say from, from a Microsoft side perspective, you know, I think everybody's read quite a bit in the last six months about some pretty significant changes that Microsoft's made in terms of how we're interacting with our customers. Yeah. Um, and one of the great things that we came out with is this customer success unit, which is really just a team of people dedicated to customer success within the platform. And that ties to training, right? It's not mm -hmm. just success in deploying, mm -hmm. it's success in having your users love what they, what they, what they that, use, that, yeah. right? And, and so what I would say is, re, you know, for, for customers, definitely reach out early to the Microsoft team, um, you know, to the account team that helps. You know, we have the specialists, we have the technical people. We also have that customer success unit that really is there to yeah, do that. And, and the other part is, is really just don't be afraid to break what you do, mm. right? Whatever your process is, the biggest thing that I've run into in the past is we've always done it this way. It works. Just leave it alone. You know, it's not broken. It is broken, is the reality. You know, it really is. We see it time and time again. Don't be afraid to break it. And then to your point, to break it again in three months and break it again next week and break it again, right? We need that, evergreen process just absolutely. like we need evergreen tools. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. So I think, I think you know, leveraging that, that you know, with, with Planet and, and, you know, the, the, the platform that you guys have is an amazing platform that I, I, I recommend very highly to all of our customers. You know, that and, you know, working with the account team, working with the success team, and really just having that, um, you know, the, the challenger mindset, right? Go and challenge all of your norms and whatever you think is normal and, and status quo, challenge it and always push to try and be a little bit better. That's great. Brendan? To jump off that point, uh, one of the best ways to make your employees or team really feel value is to implement a continuous learning campaign. Because what you're saying is, hey, I'm investing in your future. Yeah, that's right? a great point. Absolutely. There is a lot of technology yeah, out there. Awesome. I know you're used to doing it one way, but here's the new stuff, and I want you to know that we want you to go learn that. Not only for your own efficiencies, but because we know it's important to stay educated, to stay valued. And when you can get into that mindset, you're going to get more out of an individual yeah. because then they're, they're, they know, okay, this is a team thing, mm -hmm. and, they, and they're investing in that with me. That's awesome. Dave, yeah, and, and again, back to the 21st century idea, people learn in different ways, and giving them multiple ways to access information to help them do their job better is investing in them and making them feel that they're part of this team that's improving, you know, is engineering a new way of doing things, new biz business, and new opportunities for collaboration and organizational change. So it's, yeah, it's great. Well, thank you very much. You know, it reminds me, this whole dialogue reminds me of a, uh, an article I read one time by a director of marketing for a, a large fast food chain. And what this individual said was, when we went to launch a new chicken sandwich, we knew there was already a chicken sandwich that was an industry leader. And we said, we knew we had to touch individuals 21 times with messaging to get them to see us as a viable chicken sandwich provider. Same thing here. You're not going to change people's behavior in terms of how they learn by simply putting something in front of them once. We need to touch them many times, not just on the content, but where the content comes from and where they actually go to get that content, 21 times. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.